Hi, my name is Lisa McLeod. I'm the MPP for Nepean, and this is, of course, my good friend and colleague, Stefan Sarazane from Glengarry Prescott Russell, and Nolan Quinn from Stormont Dundas South Glengarry. And together we make up Eastern Ontario's Sunrise Eastern Ontario podcast, where the morning starts and so does Ontario. It's great to be back after a nice break. Uh, there was a, I guess, a 10-week break. One of my staff uh, counted it because he missed me so much. <laughs> and uh, we're here now at the Ontario Legislature back first week. And of course, uh, lots to, to talk about, but what to expect in the new session. But I just wanted to catch up with you guys. I know we've seen each other a few times at a couple different events um, throughout uh, the break, um, particularly when you guys would visit with me in Ottawa, but uh, you know, throughout the, throughout the time, you've been very busy. So Stefan, you did something pretty cool. You went to Brussels. Yes, on behalf of the uh, Parliament, Francophone Parliamentary, uh, as I uh, am the, uh, they call it, the uh, member in charge of the whole uh, America. So uh, it was nice to be there and to be able to represent the Francophone of Ontario in a and the whole uh, country. You know? And you learned about AI. Yes, we had a like a one day uh, seminar on AI, and you know it was actually interesting to see what the government there is doing because it's a powerful tool, and at one point you know it has to be legislated. You know? So you know, it was uh, it was really interesting, and we had people from I don't know maybe thirty different countries there. Yeah, so, yeah. and you dropped by my riding. Uh, my constituency of Nepean um, with Peter Bethlen Falvey, our finance minister. And you and I stayed at one place a little bit longer. It's called uh, ABEC, and it is uh, building modular homes that are happening uh, very quickly, and they're very nice homes. Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that? I was really impressed. You know, they have the uh, manufacturing there, and they do like walls and they, they put it all together after on site and they can build a house I guess in a matter of a couple of days and uh, I mean that's something we need you know to be able to build more houses in Ontario yeah absolutely. So it, was, it was really amazing and uh, people were really uh, nice and uh, it was uh, quite impressive it was good it was yeah. and it's a nice facility too it is yes yeah. really and you're gonna come back Yes, for sure, uh, for sure. We'll for bring that. our uh, Minister of Housing there. Yeah, yeah, Rob Flack we're hoping to bring. Yeah, yeah, so absolutely. that'll be exciting. And of course, uh, you were also in my constituency, Nolan. Uh, you did a really <clears throat> beautiful uh, luncheon um, to talk about the Soldiers' Aid Commission, but on issues pertaining to your private members bill and also the community and social services portfolio and we had about a hundred seniors out some of them gave you a tough tough go as they would <laughs> but uh, but why don't you tell us a little bit about what you were up to um, this 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 time and uh, I know that you hit up some places like Robert Smarts you met with voice found a sex trafficking organization but that's only part of what you did during the break because you were across the entire province uh, on tour it was, yeah. So it's been a busy, busy break. Uh, gone up North Bay for announcements, uh, Kitchener-Waterloo, Hamilton, been pretty well all over the place. But uh, your luncheon was great. Uh, over 100 seniors there to be able to share our message, to share what we're doing at Queen's Park, including my private member's bill, uh, which is kind of linked into Soldiers Aid Commission. Um, ultimately, I think it's extremely important to, to really get the word out. So. It was great to come to your riding. Absolutely love coming to your riding. You're an all-star in your riding all the time, so it's always good to get there. But yeah, we've been all over for the pediatric healthcare announcements. Uh, so we've been doing echo announcements right across the province and then the Soldiers' Aid Tour. So I told my wife I'd be more helpful this Christmas holiday, and I was not. And and not. I'm, I'm good to <laughs> good to try, but uh, unfortunately I, uh, I strike out quite often when it comes to the home life. Yeah, oh, come on. I think that uh, I think it's a tough life and, and families... Um, you know, adjust to it, and uh, kids are really resilient, and our spouses are very forgiving. <laughs> no, yes, very much so, and the kids, yeah, I, I don't know if they miss me too much. My wife is so busy when I'm in Toronto with different events and sports like that, so it's good to know they're busy and not really dwelling on the fact that I'm not home. Yeah, and you were up, I think, north making an announcement when I was in your constituency for Finance Committee, yes. and of course your mayor and some of the healthcare care organizations of, of appeared before committee um, and so let's talk about maybe what we should expect for this fall session or this uh, sorry spring session um, with for Eastern Ontario and in particular our communities because uh, you know we heard in, in Cornwall uh, some, some, some of the challenges that we're hearing everywhere else in the province uh, what are the big issues that you hope to deal with while you're here um, back for the for, for the spring session? Well, one of them I think has already been dealt with. Uh, the Seaway Valley Health Centre came and uh, was a witness at uh, the Cornwall Finance Committee uh, meetings 
and we just had an announcement for over four million dollars to be able to roster uh, 19,000 patients in my riding. So, and I think it overlaps into yeah. Stefan's riding as well. So that has been the number one issue that we see either in email or phone is uh, lack of doctors or lack of a family health team. So that, that announcement is pretty significant. I think in my riding there's about 20,000 people that are unrostered. So 19,000, including a little bit overlap into yours, the majority of them are gonna find a family health team. So that's significant, I think. Outside of that, I think it's the same for all of us, but wastewater and water. Um, you know, we are ready to grow in Eastern Ontario, but without the wastewater, it makes it a bit, bit of a challenge to be able to get the developers to come in and to do a subdivision without having to do the septics. And one other thing I want to talk about, Great Wolf Lodge. Yes. Great Wolf Lodge is progressing. Uh, we we're almost there. It seems like uh, we're just in the, the nitty uh, details or the nitty gritty, I guess, the details, um, specifically just the road and a few other things. So we're hoping to have an announcement in the coming months that will be 100% official at that point. Amazing. Been a lot of work on it, yeah. But it's it's going to be great for all of our ridings, oh, all of Eastern sure. Ontario. You know, all boats rise with high tides, not to be too cheesy, but ultimately um, they're going to be sending people out into my community, your community, and yours as well. Yeah. Um, they're commission-based, so they try to get you outside the lodge to go to the museums, to go to the agritourism as well. So I see this as a huge net benefit to all of Eastern Ontario. Yeah, and I look at Steve Clark's riding, for example, in Gananoque Way after Brockville, um, and, and, and you know Johnstown and uh, then to Cornwall and then uh, Parliament Hill in the city of Ottawa like there's going to be so much to offer um, so that's really really exciting and uh, no you're, you're doing a great job and I'm, I'm excited that you're so full of enthusiasm still after two years <laughs> <laughs> yeah, still on the honeymoon phase so uh, yeah. but the, I think the good thing about the Great Wolf Lodge is it's gonna be new dollars and new visits Ontario yeah. You know, there's about 600,000 visits they're expecting, they're estimating, and the majority of those will be from New York State or from Quebec, so ultimately it's bringing dollars into Ontario. Yeah, no, it's really, really good. And Stefan, of course, you're a PA to Energy. Carbon tax is on the agenda every single day here at the Queen's Park. Um, we, we talk about it, the other parties talk about it, the federal Liberals are making life more expensive, so that's tough. And then on the, the, the healthcare side, we're all dealing with challenges. And, and thirdly, I mean, you're really interested in bringing new schools to your constituency as well, because as Ottawa grows, so does your constituency. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And I mean, and we, we, we can't forget that we had the Roma conference also in January. Yeah. It seems far, but yeah. uh, we, we haven't been sitting since. And, uh, you know, it was great to meet with many municipalities there. And we, like I was there on behalf of the Minister of Energy, I think we met with over 30 municipalities all asking like most of them asking for natural gas expansion and you know it's uh, at the same time the federal government wants to phase out natural gas so you're wondering you know who's who's listening to who where, where is the disconnect yeah well, the exactly want it but the federal exactly. government doesn't want it too. so we got to work hard you know to, and this is a part of making life affordable for uh for residents. So uh, I'm on propane. Program. I would absolutely yeah. love to have natural gas if I could. So uh, oh, sign my municipality up for that. And of course, I did also participate with my municipality. And like Nolan was saying, you know, infrastructure needs. It's a, it's a big issue. I mean, we want to grow, but at the same time, it costs pressure on these small municipalities. So we're working with them to try to get money and uh, to make it happen. Yeah, so you're going to be lobbying the finance minister. Exactly. Well, I'm doing the same thing, yeah. guys. I just met with 25 different stakeholders last week uh, from the city of Ottawa, all of our colleges and universities, all of our um, boards of education, um, all of our uh, hospital CEOs, um, and all of our major, well, all of our hospitals, and um, a number of other community organizations because Ottawa's got a challenge in the downtown core not only with homelessness but uh, drug abuse and it's becoming a very difficult thing for people to want to either open a business or keep their business open down there. Uh, it's difficult for tourists who predominantly would um, populate our city uh, because we are the federal seat of parliament and then of course it, it is very just difficult for um, for those who live in the community and so some of the things that we're hearing um, it, it really revolve around increased investments into mental health. Um, increased investments into um, uh, nurse practitioner like clinics which we were able to announce uh, in, in, in that community in the downtown area. Uh, so these are some of the areas that we're looking at. Obviously the international students piece um, at our colleges and universities is very difficult particularly step on for our francophone university and college the Cité and uh, University of Ottawa. And just like you you know I met with some of the CEOs of 
you know, the yeah. college and the hospital over, uh, you know, during our break. So it was, it's always nice to hear their challenges and try to work with them and make things better. And find out what their ask is. Yep. You know, what really do you need from the provincial government? Mm -hmm. um, you went to Robert Smart Center, for example, and, and we don't, do know that that place needs a new facility. But when it all came down to it, they're not going to build a new facility tomorrow. They've got a process that they've got to go through. So what do they need today in order to uh, best serve um, the kids that are in that uh, environment? And, you know, they're, they're able to give you a, a quick, uh, you know, and what they really want really doesn't add up to a whole lot. Um, when you look at some of the smaller projects, like University of Ottawa, for example, is opening up this innovative research um, incubator, and it just sounds totally amazing. Um, some of our hospitals have expansion plans that aren't really that expensive, but look to be able to a, a deal with the emerging population. So I'm looking forward to getting a note off to the, the uh, finance minister, the mayor, and the premier about some of these core priorities for the city of Ottawa. And I'm really looking forward to being able to deliver on that as I, as I know you guys are. So what are you looking forward to? The spring. <laughs> no, I know the, uh, I was going to mention Easter. the Rideau. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Rideau Canal hasn't really been open too much this year at all. I've been building a rink for my kids and it's been a, a labor of love. Every second day it seems to melt in Eastern Ontario, so of all years to go on a rink, I've been out uh, till 2 a.m. most mornings trying to water that rink, but uh, no, I'm looking forward to the spring and getting out of the winter, that's why I have the beard, you know, it's a little cold out there, so I have to yeah. incognito with my beard during I the winter I told you you look like Ben Affleck. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> and also I'll, like I'll make sure to Ray. tell my wife that as well. <laughs> and also like Matt Ray. Yeah, Matt Ray and I, uh, we get confused for each other, that's for sure. Yeah, what about you? Yeah, well, it wasn't bad. You know, this winter we didn't, well, we just started traveling back here and the roads are not, you know, the, it's really the, the first winter I was expecting, you know, sometime to have bad weather coming here in Toronto, maybe to have to take the train, but so far so good. And uh, I think we're almost, you know, at the end of February. So uh, it's all good. I think we're going to get a early spring. Well, you're my late Valentine's voice. <laughs> I'm late on my wife's <laughs> Valentine too, so. I'll get that started. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is great to have one of our friends and our colleagues and a fellow Eastern Ontarian here today to join myself, Nolan, and Stefan, John Jordan from the late the, the riding of Lanark and Frontenac, Frontenac Kingston. Le, and Kingston. Yeah. It's changed so much over the years. It has, yeah. Yeah. When it was Lanark Renfrew when my dad was in in the nineties. Yeah. When yeah. when did your dad serve? Ninety. All through the nineties. All through the entire nineties. Yeah. I remember meeting him um, because we had a. Uh, a big event with John Torrey and Scott yeah. Reed and uh, Randy Hillier. Okay. And there was a picture that was taken and Warren Kinsella, who was running the Liberal War Room at the time, said, um, had a bunch of thought bubbles in her head and mine had, I'd rather be baking cookies. And so anyway, he and I have become great friends and I wrote a cookbook over it, but that photo actually created quite a firestorm um, about women in politics. So, per, something right. you didn't know. Something I didn't know, thanks yeah. very much. Yeah, so why did you get involved in, in politics after your, your dad, and, and why do you want to be part of public service? Well, I'd have to say it was never part of my long-term plan when I was, uh, you know, raising kids and, and working on my career, which was in healthcare. Uh, but I was getting close to retirement, and uh, there was an opportunity in, uh, in the riding for a new uh, representative for the PC party. Um, so I, as my dad would say, threw my hat in the ring, and here I am. So Yeah, well uh, you're a, an incredible steady hand, I'd say uh, really uh, been remarkable for that community uh, since taking over and making sure that uh, there is a steady leadership that uh, is respected at, at Queen's Park and in the community, and so I want to congratulate you for that. And I know that you've been taking on a, another big role because you're the parliamentary assistant to long-term care. Long -term and care. so your health care uh, background comes in real handy right now as we deal with uh, you know coming on the other side of what was a crisis. It has been handy to uh, to lean back on that experience uh, when new initiatives by this government come forward and there's a lot of new initiatives to uh, to improve our long-term care plan so um, so thanks for your, your comments uh, yeah. but uh, uh, I have depended on that uh, that experience quite a bit in my role as uh, PA to long-term care for sure. We're lucky to have you in that role. Doing a great job by the way. Yeah. Yeah. You, you are, but you're also a farmer. 
I'm also, I don't call myself a farmer. I okay. call myself a guy who farms. Okay. And there's, there's quite a significant di difference, and I, I don't want to insult the true farmers of the, of the, uh, of the world, but uh, I do enjoy farming. I do enjoy the environment. And uh, my son and I have some black Angus beef, and uh, that's, uh, I'm, I'm at the, the homestead, uh, the Kelly homestead. My, my mom was a Kelly. And uh, so that's uh, that's the farm that's going on right now. So oh, okay. Has that farm been in your family for many generations? Yeah, my grandfather Tom Kelly uh, oh. uh, had it initially, and then uh, my father. It actually sold out of that out of the family for a few years, and then my dad bought it back in. Yes. So that's the that's the history on that. So I have another question, and then I do want to turn it over to the guys. Is I recently was at an event which Stefan was at with the Minister of Finance uh, just out in Carp, and one of the principals of vodka was out there and he was talking to us about how they've turned uh, cow milk into uh, vodka but now they're turning it into jet fuel <laughs> and you know when i spoke with you you you're well aware of it obviously it's in your constituency uh, what what do you make of that that's kind of an interesting um, export we may have uh, out of ontario well what a strong team there and when we went in there you know what started uh, you know really on 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 very small scale and uh, and it's grown and taken advantage of, of opportunities and it's certainly and I should add you know during COVID they were a big supplier of uh, hand sanitizer for yeah. the area and as we all know there was a shortage of supply so a great community organization for sure and uh, so yeah they make these uh, uh, cream liqueur and, uh, and, and the vodka which you know historically speaking I wouldn't have thought of making that from milk but uh, uh, but it is quite delicious if you ever get a chance to, to try it. Maybe, maybe you have. But it's, a, uh, it's an innovative organization. Now they're expanding into, uh, into making fuel from the byproduct uh, of, uh, that they, they, they make the, uh, the liquor from. So it's a, it's, a, it's a growing industry. It's an innovative industry. And the team there is, is right on top of it all the time. So it's it's, really it's, uh, I was really impressed when I went in there. Their facility is beautiful. And uh, small scale, but uh, and the uh, the fuel production is done offsite somewhere else. But it's uh, yeah. a, a growing industry, I, I think and hope. Well, when I was tourism minister, that was what I would give out. You know, so you know, I don't always want to give something from Ottawa out. Yeah. But uh, what was really cool was just the how unique that was. It is the unique. Vodka, yeah. Yeah. and it'd be really cool with the jet fuel. Now, guys, do you have any hard? Well, to it's amazing. Questions? Like we were uh, talking to the gentleman, and he was talking about you know. How they work with the U.S. government uh, uh, developing the uh, the airplane fuel and uh, starting from you know cow Elmont. milk. Uh, Is it in Elmont it's, it's or in Carleton Place? It's in Elmont. Yeah, yeah. 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 Not Almonte. <laughs> Almonte. <laughs> oh, I've had many people say Almonte to me over the years. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> no, they were quite impressive business people. You know, I just remember at the height of the pandemic, they really pivoted quick into the sanitizer yeah, fields. And, yeah, yeah. you know, we needed that. We had a lot of businesses that stepped up. And theirs is one of the ones that resonated with me and how quickly they, they came to the table and helped us out with the sanitizer. Yeah. So. And they're very thank thankful to uh, Premier Ford because yeah. during that hard time, you know, they took advantage of opportunities that the provincial government put out there. And certainly the hand sanitizer was one of them. But... Uh, they mentioned that a couple times. I met with them, uh, I guess, a month and a half ago or so, and uh, so they were very supportive of uh, the supports that the government had given. No, that's that's really good. I mean, we uh, certainly do think a lot about your area, and I think a bit about tourism as well. I used to be the tourism minister, and mm -hmm. such a gorgeous area, so steeped in history. When you mentioned El Monte, or Almont, <laughs> it's the home of, uh, of James Naismith, who was the founder of uh, yeah, basketball. basketball yeah. I mean, yeah. you have a lot of interesting things there. Canada's Walk of Fame, obviously, uh, yeah. was there this past summer. Tell us a little bit about um, some of your travels that you took over the past uh, 10 weeks uh, while we've been on break. Um, I know that you were, and you always have been very busy on making announcements for long-term care or uh, dealing in the policy realm, trying to get uh, things just right. Uh, what, what were your experiences the last couple months? Well, I think going back and even beyond, beyond the break, the travels in long-term care uh, or for long-term care, which is the purpose of my, my traveling, is, uh, is all very positive. Mm -hmm. Uh, when, uh, when we go in, the minister or myself go into long-term care homes, uh, long-term care homes are very thankful about the initiatives that this government has put forward and the assistance that we have given them relative to staffing, uh, new beds, reconditioned beds, uh, priority fund announcements, 
all of these things have made the environment in long-term care uh, a better environment for the workers. It's certainly helping with our retention and, uh, and recruitment as well, having more people going into those healthcare uh, careers. Uh, through the many programs that this government has put forward, have you know when we go in there, it's a positive, uh, yeah. it's a positive feel. Which uh, so I feel I consider myself fortunate to be in long-term care because that's the environment right now. Yeah. We're building a new system in long-term care, and it's all on the uh, on the positive. And side. you have a great minister; he's got a great way about him. That'd be part of that plan to to build like how many fifty-eight thousand or. 58,000 beds, yeah, yeah. It's it's new and reconditioned beds. Yes. Making up yeah. for lost time, right? Yeah, making up for lost time. time. You know, we're well on the uh, way with 18,000 either opened, ribbons cut, or shovels in the ground. So John, I know the local priority fund has been pretty good, widely used, right, with long-term care. I think yeah. you've been in my writing a few times for that. Um, I'm sure you're getting great, great uh, reviews or great response on that when you go into the homes. Yeah. Yeah, priority fund, you know, it's, it's so uh, logical when you think about it. And I know even from when, you know, when my dad was in long-term care, getting, t taking a resident and moving them out to the hospital for a uh, diagnostic test or a procedure that could be done in the long-term care home, like that's a bad day for long-term care residents. And it's a bad day for the staff too, because they have to do the preparation mm -hmm. and, uh, and all the things that, that go with that, that transport. Um, so what the priority fund announcement or priority fund funds really uh, do is they allow us to bring in more services into the long-term care home so that those residents do not have to go out for a lot of services that can that can be done within, within the home. And the other upside to that is that there's people in ALC waiting to get into long-term care home and the only reason they're not going into long-term care home is the equipment that they need isn't in the long-term care home. So, and it's called a priority fund announcement because the homes actually identify what they need uh, to meet the needs of their of their residents. We had one of those at uh, Minister Cho came down to Ottawa, and the Royal Ottawa Hospital, which is a mental health hospital, actually has a long-term care facility in it. And so, their residents are much different than the population in other LTCs. So. It came in handy for that purpose. Yeah, yeah. No, you know, it's a great program, and the government has put thirty-five, another thirty-five million, into that to continue it on. So, um, they definitely recognize the benefit of that. And positive. It's well received. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, well received. Yeah. Well, we only have a few more minutes left. Do you guys have any questions before we wrap her up? No, I'm just hoping like soon. I think by the end of this summer, should be able to invite you to do the, uh, you know, the the opening of the that big long-term care facility in Oxbury. The uh, Prescott Russell residents. I, I, was, I was a warden when we did the groundbreaking, and now we know working with our government to uh, make sure you know we, we build some more. I, I, we all have some projects going on in our writing, other projects that you know are just about to start. So uh, it's it's amazing. Yeah, and you've worked on that from the municipal level and yes, the yes, uh, parliament level. So yeah. that'll be a, you know a bit of a legacy there, yeah, Stefan. For but sure, it's a, it's a big home. And one day I might use one of these rooms, you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> Let's open Me and Nolan have a, uh, you know, oh gosh. we're going to share together. Room. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll be room. visiting. Okay, It'll be entertaining. Be so, John, not to put you on the spot, but everyone asks me when I'm bringing the ice cream. So, when are you bringing the black Angus beef? <laughs> oh! <laughs> yeah, well, every Wednesday there's a potluck up in my office, so if you want to bring some, uh, we, we we'll usually out sell them it. before they get to that stage. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, that's great. Well, look, we won't keep you too long. I just want to know. Um, you know, uh, there will be some of your constituents watching and other people from the region. Um, just sort of what, what you think the local priorities would be for you as we go into June and, uh, and uh, take forward through this session. She underestimated, though, they watch right across Canada. It's not just Eastern Ontario. Well, my mother right does watch, and she's in Nova Scotia. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when they get big snow, uh, storms, they really watch it. <laughs> Run out of Netflix. They're stuck at home. Yeah. Well, you know, I think, Lisa, you know, our priorities in Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston are very similar to priorities across, you know, r rural Ontario. Affordability is a big issue right now. Um, housing is, as well. And the, and the, the dial's moving. Uh, there's, there's a number of builds right in my hometown of Smith Falls, and we've had some social housing builds, yeah. builds as well. And uh, our hospital and the staffing issues, again, the needle's moved. Uh, and the rural long-term care homes have a harder time with, uh, with moving, that, moving that dial, so I know some of our homes are still struggling with the, uh, the need and demand for agencies. Uh, but uh, improvements are coming, and there's so many initiatives that have been put in place. 
you know, whether it's a learn and stay program, whether it's you know, the financial incentives for the nurses, the grants for tuition, and all those things are starting. We're starting to see those cohorts come out. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah. uh, you know, we're, we're seeing improvements in that. But, you know, pretty common across uh, all our, our, our Eastern Ontario ridings is that affordability, the housing and, and the health care that are the, are the main big ones. For sure. And we're talking about infrastructure needs for small towns, you know, that are booming and probably had to attend to some of the Roma yeah. conference with some of your municipality like we did. So uh, big uh, issues there. Big yeah, challenges. there's a lot of infrastructure that's aging for sure and that those uh, those are big ticket items for small communities and small tax base. Yeah. Well, you've been awesome. Thank you very much for coming on. Thanks for having me. We appreciate yeah. John Jordan and uh, him oh, joining us here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I keep calling him every Jordan, Michael Jordan. Let's hear the Michael Jordan vlog <laughs> uh, But it's great. I know uh, uh, Stefan and Nolan and, and John and I are very grateful to be able to represent Eastern Ontario at Queen's Park. And we are part of a loud group of uh, voices that are very uh, distinct um, from the rest of the province. And we're very proud of the work that we do. So, uh, guys, do you have any parting comments? It's where Ontario began. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Yeah, can you say it in French? Yeah, c'est où, où est-ce que l'Ontario débute? Où est-ce que le soleil se lève à chaque matin? Yes, so what ladies, you said. <laughs> <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, uh, for this week's episode of Sunrise Eastern Ontario, where Ontario and your mor morning starts, uh, thanks for joining us and have a great day, and we will continue to be your voices at Queen's Park, not the other way around.